Welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. In this session, we're going to work with a module called the OS module and work with subdirectories using the OS module. So if you go to the Blackboard website in NRM 638 class, go to Python Scripts. And then in the Week 1 Python Basics, there's a text file osmodules.txt. So you want to download that and we'll copy and paste from this text file. So right mouse click, save link as or save target as. Okay, so we'll start the Python interpreter and we'll be copying and pasting from this text file osmodules.txt. So the first thing we'll do is import the module. So control C to copy, control V to paste. And there's a lot to this module. Um, there's a lot of functions. And one of the functions we're going to use is change directory. So help os.change directory. So that's a built-in function, and it's basically just change directory and then the path that you want to change to. And that changes your current working directory. And your current working directory you can get using the .get current working directory function. So that returns a string representing the current working directory. So we could put that in a variable called my folder. So in this case, what's inside that string variable my folder? So that's my current working directory right now. Okay, so what we'll do is change our current working directory using the change directory function. Control C and then Control V to paste. So now that's our current working directory, C. Okay, remember that a backslash is a special character in Python. So this is going to result in an error because it's going to see this backslash T and interpret that as a tab character. So we get that error. So there's three solutions to the problem when working with paths. So one solution would be to use a double backslash, and that will work. So now I could say, what's my current working directory? The second is we can use an R. An R basically says, treat it as a raw string. Do not interpret the backslash as a special character. So that'll work. So then the third solution would be to use a forward slash in our path. We don't need that R, we'll just use a forward slash. And then once again, we could say get our current working directory and it is C. Okay, so we'll put that C temp in a string variable called my folder. And then we'll use the OS make dir to make some test folders inside our current working directory. So what we'll do is we'll go through a loop and we'll basically say for i ranging from 1 up to including and not including 11. So i is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We'll make a new folder as my current working directory plus a, back, a backslash test folder plus we'll convert that i counter to a string and then we'll make a new folder. So we'll copy and paste this loop, and then control V to paste, and then enter to execute that loop. So we've created 10 new folders inside C temp. So we could go to Windows Explorer. So here are the new folders that we created in C temp. Okay, we can use the list dir to list files and subdirectories. So if we go help OS lister, it returns a list of strings that are the entries in that directory. And they could be files or they could be subdirectories in a directory. So we'll use that and create a list called list entries. So now what's in this variable called list entries that's a list? So that's what's in my folder, which in this case is C temp. Some of these are files. So for example, here's an MP3, here's a text file, and some of them are folders. So what we could do is we can create a list of folders from this list of entries. 
So the first thing we'll do is we'll make an empty list and I'll name it list folders. And then for every entry in this list, if we'll use the OS path dot is dir, that function returns true if it's a directory. So if this is true, the entry is a directory and then we'll append that entry to this empty list. So we'll run this loop. So control C to copy, control V to paste. So if this is true, if the entry is a directory, we'll append it to our list. So then enter to execute. And then what's in our new list? So it contains all the folders from this list of entries which we created using the list deer. So the key is list deer lists not just directories but also files in that directory. Okay, another useful module is the glob module. So control C, control V to paste, and then help on that module. So it has two functions. And the function we're going to use is this glob function. So it'll be glob.glob, .glob, and it will return a list of paths matching a pattern where we can use wildcards. So as an example, we could say, go to our current working directory and glob.glob, .glob, find all the files that start with test folder, and our wildcard is an asterisk and return that to a list. So now if we look at what glob.glob .glob returned, we've got all the folders that start with test folder. So we could remove those using the .rmdir function in the OS module. So for every folder in this list of folders, and enter, so that removes all those folders that were in C temp that had a name test folder of some sort. Okay, you could also use glob.glob .glob to get file. So just create a file in C temp. So if we go to C temp and right mouse click new text document and let's name this test1.txt. Okay, it's an empty file right now, but we can still get a list of files that start with test. So now if we look in that list, here's a list of files that start with test. What we could do is we could say, give us the first occurrence of that list and put it in a variable called my file. So this basically says, give me the first occurrence in the list. So now if we look at my file, We've got test.txt is the only thing in that variable, and this is a variable, it's not a list. So we could use the OS path module to get what is the size of any file. So in this case, the file is empty, so OS path.getSize returns a value of zero bytes for that file. So OS path allows you to work with subdirectories or file names in a path. So we could get a variable OS path absolute path function and we'll put that in a variable called full path. So what is in full path? So that contains the path and the file name and the extension of my file. If you want just get the base name, you would use OS path base name, and that returns simply the file name and not the path. And if you want to return the directory name, we could use OS path your name, so that returns the directory name of C temp. Okay, sometimes we want to know, does something exist? So we could say, okay, does this file exist? And it returns either a true or a false. In this case, it's true because 
in this directory C temp, there is a file called test.txt. And then we could use ospath.split to create a tuple. But then let's look at the result of ospath.split. So it re returns a tuple that has the directory as the first item in the tuple and then the file name as a second item in the tuple. So we could say for i in my tuple print i. So this is the first item in the tuple and then the next item in the tuple. Okay, you can also use the ospath.split extension and that will split it at the extension. So then what's inside our tuple so the first item in our tuple is path and the file name, and then the second item is the extension.txt. So once again, that was ospath.split at the extension. Okay, so that's enough for this video session. If you go to the Blackboard website, there's a quiz question, and that will lead you to the next video session, which will be working with text files.